You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Strong themes and coarse language may apply. Until then, I'm Jack Ward, and for myself and David Alt, wherever you are, David, thank you and good night. Oh, hello, John, Arnie, Brad. David Alt. Uh, fancy meeting you folks up here. Aren't you meant to be in the... Well, we were actually heading to the basement, but yeah, the basement. Brad hit the wrong button. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I did not. Then why are we not heading to the basement? Because I hit the wrong button. Well... I mean, I thought I was supposed to meet Jack up here in the penthouse, and... And Brad thought that penthouse meant floor of dancing centerfolds. We've got to be around here somewhere. Yeah, there's I, I, windows up here. Look, guys, do you see that? They have windows here. I know. Um, look, really excuse me, windows? folks. Uh, just, um, I need to get down to the lobby. <laughs> sure yeah, windows? uh, Maybe yeah, lobby, H- if you please. H- Thank you. Hey, the Tiki Bar only has so many muskrats. I'll have Miles, my intern, look for some roadkill, and in the meantime, how about if I take you to this Arby's that's nearby? You know, Mr. Bill, you don't really have to see Going down? Uh, yes, mind. as rapidly as my patience, it seems. <laughs> Come on, fellas. Brunch is on me. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, yeah, just, guys, uh, press in. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of room, yep. <clears throat> if only this was a tardis. Or a tortoise. How would a turtle make a difference? You know, my wife and I went to a turtle pun class last year. Uh-oh. <clears throat> what did you find out? It tortoise nothing. Uh, oh, that's uh, horrible. Uh, hey, why did you groan? You said it. Yeah, but I heard it in my head first, and I still said it out loud. It's not punny at so all. that's on me. Is this how slow the elevator is? It's slower. Really? Get off my feet. Stop got, stepping got, on my feet. Okay. I've got to get to the theater. Get your elbow out of my gut. Brad, you smell hey good. Hey, guys, I'm rushing down from the Narada archives. There's archives on the eighth floor? It's not archives. It's his archives. Arnie said that. I didn't say that. Do you notice that? Arnie said that. timing how fast the elevator takes to get to the cellar. So, so what? Huh? What? What about selling? Okay. Huh? Huh? Oh. What? Huh? Look, push the back, everyone. Just... I think there's plenty of room. Just... Uh, hey. <clears throat> And ready, everyone? Okay. Uh, I don't know one, about you, but I like and it. Two, and a... Why don't you stop rubbing up against me? Hey, your pocket protector hurts. Everybody in! We're headed for the lobby! <sighs> Which floor is this? Fifth floor. Special projects. Here's the dancing circle! <laughs> you never imagine it's gonna happen, and then one day... Wow! You mean a dozen dancing girls get into an elevator with you? Oh, I mean, Brad being right about something. <laughs> now, just, Wait, what? just squish against the walls. Like, what? There's plenty of honey. Get that elbow out of No, the Mutual Audio Network is uh, really a bunch of brave people. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! Don't believe them. Passing gas is a point of honor with orcs. If it were them, it wouldn't be deadly and silent. I know that that was you, Brad. Let's throw it. Are you going down? Oh, stop trying to blame the You know I have to be smart. Now. Actually, I'll take the stairs. I want to take the stairs as well. You know what, honey? Maybe we should take a vacation.
Uh, David? David? Are you in there? Jack? Yes. I I've been in it for hours. Four hours and 32 minutes. I'm beating my record. Jack, Jack, can you open the doors? We're stuck just before the lobby. I'm, I'm sure you can get it open. Hugo, you there? Here I am! Here I am! Can you reset the elevator? Oh, oh, it's so good to get out of there. Oh, I, 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 can, I can breathe again. I don't think I've breathed ever again in my entire life. Oh, mercy sakes, thank you. Fresh air. Well, as fresh as it gets here. I think I'm going to take the stairs to the cell basement. We have stairs? I thought those were a fire hazard or something. Come on, ladies. Things are shaping up for the 10th anniversary show, Jack. 10th anniversary? You can never start too early. This is amazing. Do you see this time? I'm going to be able to beat it every time from now on. Oh, the time I'm going to save. I, I would think you would. Uh, Jack, the orcs would like to complain. They are in good company. No, another 20 minutes, and they would have just eaten everyone in the elevator. Frankly, I'm glad you came by when you did. Of course, now I've got to go buy them food at Arby's. Take care, brother. Oh, the testing time, Mr. Ward! Well done, Hugo. Jack, are you saying that you kept us all in there? You, you kept me in there for over four hours to test the elevator? I missed the opening of Sonic Summerstock. Oh, no, no of course not, David. I, I'd never do that. Yes, the Ward just wanted me to test the sound tone of the elevator, whatever that is. You folks kept talking, though. Blah, 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 blah. Had to shut the elevator down and wait for everybody to shut up. Yeah, well, um, you know, Hugo, you could have waited until the elevator was empty. Mr. Ward, I'm a busy man. Busy, busy, busy. Not like you audio production radio drama types who sit around and talk all day. Talk, talk, talk. That's all you do. Some of us have real jobs, you know what I mean? <laughs> like me. Have you ever pushed a broom around an entire building? No, I don't think so. Let me talk to you. This is the Mutual Audio Drama Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Ah, oh, well, that was one extremely long week. You know, instead of meeting David at the Playhouse tonight, I think I'll tune in, like most people. We've got all the best reception at the Mutual Tower, and of course, here, up here in the penthouse. Tonight's performance is from Mark Slade and his players at Rocket 88 Productions, if I remember correctly. They're bringing us the classic Arch Obler play from Lights Out, Revolt of the Worms. However, this version, as it's coming back to me, has been somewhat Sladeified. <laughs> Here we go. Just need to turn the dial and there! crime and horror anthology show. Stories about people caught in desperate times. Oh, 
Oh, there you are. I feel like you're hiding from me. My name is Evan Bumblefoot. I'm your host for this program. Evan Bumblefoot. That's about as depressing a name as anyone could have. I was just a baby when I realised how terrible my name was. Tried to choke myself to death on my mother's milk. And when she realised what I was doing, she never fed me again. Which is why I hate her. Also well, my psychiatrist says, but I don't like him very much either. You keep looking at the walls. What's wrong? You don't like the colour black? Or is it the holes in the concrete? Oh. <sighs> you don't like being chained to the wall. You don't like the gag as well, I'd imagine. Oh. <sighs> I just brought you here so you could listen to my little story. It's a depressing story about a man trying to create a new strain of roses. Instead, he creates a revolt of the worms. <sighs> I think it would be good to have someone to be depressed with, like a suicide pact. <sighs> Rocket 88 Productions presents Mark Slade's adaption of the Lights Out episode Revolt of the Worms. Wait for the floors to lift and the walls to crash in and the... Oh, facts. Think of facts. Yes, yes, a journal of facts. Think of how it began, why it's happening. A journal of facts until the walls crash in and the thick flesh... Uh, Charles Prentice, Charles Prentice. There's a fact. Chemist and fool. Fool run away. Run away, run away, run away, run away, I'll find Laven Lady, run away from the thing with the crashing of the bomb. Run away from reality. Run away from reality. Run away from reality. War, war, oh war, so much war. There's war everywhere. War, war, war. Oh, most, so much war. Oh, so much war of the guns and the bombs and the pain of hiding. Run away! Run away! Run! Run away! You mean we're going to live in this godforsaken place, Charles? Yes, Claire, I remember. You did say that. And I said, Of course we're going to live here! It's ideal for my work! But we're so far away from everything, Charles. So far away from what? Your friends? My friends? I hate it here. Honestly, if you weren't so big... Oh, I can't wait to get out of here and go shopping. All right, Charles. Whatever you say, Charles. You never did disagree with me, did you, Claire? It's so quiet up here, George. It's almost as if we were out of this world. Yes, I remember, young Jackson. You did say that. Sorry, George. I was thinking out loud. I got a head cold. I like working with you, George. Why, up here, it's almost as if we were out of this world. What, George? Who is George? Who is this George of which you continue to speak? Is he the one that binds while the Jack Benny does the fiddling? Out of the world. Out of the wild? I wanted to be out of the wild. Hide? Hide till it's over. Hide. Hide till it's over. Hide. Yes. Hide Why until not? it's over. 
Why not? What are you going all the way up there for, Prentice? To do my work, of course. <laughs> but who cares about propagating new varieties of roses at a time like this? I'm not interested in your opinions. I will do what I please. Do you hear me? I will do what I please. But, Prentice, to leave suddenly like this, it doesn't make sense. Roses are fine in normal times, but a chemist of your ability? In times like these, certainly there's more productive work you could do. Do you hear me? I will do what I please. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, sir, George. Yes, sir. Everything's ready, George. Greenhouse, all ready for you, George. One week ago, Wednesday. Does the wind always blow up here, Charles? Eh? I said the wind. Does it always blow like that? Why? It's frightening. Mighty less frightening than the things that are happening back in the city. I suppose so. I know so. Where's that boy? Jackson. Where's that boy? Oh, Jackson. Hey, Jackson. Did you call me, George? Hey, Jackson. What did you want, uh, George? Done. The phosphates. Are they ready yet? Oh, uh, not yet. Not yet, George. Well, get them ready. Every one of the plants. We work late tonight. Very, very late. Oh, so late. The darkness of the sun will be gone and the lights will not be ha- shining anymore. Work late and hard. That was the answer to everything. A chemist of your ability? In times like these, there certainly must be more important work than propagating roses that you could do. A chemist of your ability? In times like these, there certainly must be more... No, no, I wouldn't think of that. I told myself I wouldn't think of that. Roses. Yes, develop the greatest rose in the world. That would be my answer to them. While they bombed and they burned, I developed the largest rose the world had ever known. And when the world settled down again, I'd come back and bring the rose to them, and they wouldn't care if I had... I I had run away... Run away, my plan. Where did it go wrong? Claire, why did it... Oh, Claire. Oh, she's dead. You're dead. They killed you. Yes. Dead. As I'll soon be dead. If only I could think. If I could only think. Why did it go wrong? My plan. Why did it go wrong? Oh, Claire, why did it go wrong, Claire? Oh, dead. Hey, George, where do you want me to put the solution that's left over, George? I do remember. That was it. Yes, I do remember. Oh, gosh, George, I'm trying to understand, but I'm so tired. Yes, I do remember. That was it. You must keep working. The only salvation is work. What's salvation got to do with roses, George? I like roses, George. They're pretty. Don't be impertinent. Okay, George. Don't get mad. Do your work. Okie dokie. Two cc's for each plant. And careful. Don't let any of it touch the stem. Yes, George. Okie dokie. You weren't very happy, were you, Jackson? Those were the things you couldn't understand. Questions. It it ain't that I I, I don't want to work, George. It's it's just that I'm all mixed up. Them roses. Why I gotta pour the stuff on them every hour on the hour? It don't make sense, George. Everlasting questions. But now I ask them. Oh, hormones? Sure, I know what they are. <laughs> See, secretions from the glands in the human body. Questions. Everlasting questions. But now I'm the one asking them. Why did it go wrong? Sure, I, I, I know what they're for. Make us grow and everything. Right, George? <laughs> questions, everlasting questions. But now I ask them. I ask them. Why did it go wrong? I get it. 
That's what? that's what you try to do with the roses. Make them grow fast and big. But how do you know these hormones will work on plants, George? Thursday. What do I remember? Where will I throw the hormone mixture that's left over, George? Go away! Can't you see that I am working? I am doing the things that hey, are George. important stuff more than important than talking to you and asking of the questions. I said, where will I throw asking the hormones? Asking the questions, all the questions, all the time. Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Friday. <laughs> Claire? Hey, Claire, the nice wife yes. of the marrying kind? Yes, Charles. What are you doing out here in the dark? Oh, it's a lovely night. I just like the night. Oh, you women, just come back into the house. All right. For the dark of the night is cold and full of terrors. Ah! Hey? Oh, what's the matter with you? Can't you walk? If I hadn't caught you... It's slippery. What are you talking about? It's all slippery around here. Don't talk with the foolishness. But it is. Oh, stand still. I'll light a match. By George Burns, you're right. <gasps> Charles! Oh, stop with the grabbing. Wines. Wines. What? Wines. 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 The, the extra h h hormone solution. Where'll I throw it, George? George. Where'll I throw the extra h h hormone solution? George, ain't you listening? George, ain't you listening? George, ain't you listening? Yes. I remember. Friday night. And then the night. Saturday. And then the night. Jackson. Oh, Jackson, where are you, nice assistant? He's not here, Charles. That infernal boy. Where is he? He's not in the house. But I, but I told him not to go out. I told him only an hour ago he's got to work all night. And the plants, they must be watered every hour. On the hour. He went out. Well, why didn't you stop him? Now I'll have to go chase after him with the running and the hot... Oh, uh, Charles, what? Well, what did you think it was? Thunder. But the boy. I said shut the door because the door is letting in all the wind and the rain and the wetness and the carpet is getting ruined. Saturday night. That was the day it began. Charles, Charles, wake up. Please wake um, up. What? Oh, where? Oh, why? Mm, hi, oh, hi, the clowns, You're on the couch. Ladies. You fell asleep on the oh, couch. Why? Charles, mm, get oh, up right clowns, away. Clowns, lady, lady clowns. Listen to me, please. Oh, the, the boy, he, he isn't back yet. Oh, the redhead. Jackson, he isn't back yet, Charles. And the torpedoes for speed. He isn't back yet. I'm a Yankee. Charles, girl, where could he be? The storm. Girl, oh, you, you slept. I, I waited. I, I, the clowns, Charles, lady. Charles, wake up, please. Wake oh, up. right, Laban. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you looked in his room? Oh? I just came from there. Charles, where could he have gone to? All through the storm. Oh, stop with the talking so much and let me get up. I'll, I'll go see. Oh, must you follow me? Why did you wait? Why didn't you wake me up? Why did you let me sleep? I... Must have fallen asleep too. I opened my eyes. It was day. Oh, Charles! So, so he spent the night outside. What's the difference? Let it teach him a lesson. Charles. Oh well, no wonder he isn't back yet. Look at the fog. You can't see more than thing. It's like a cutting a cheese with your face. Oh my goodness! It's so far out, and there's no. You can't see it. It's as bad as night out here. Well, no wonder he isn't back yet. Fog like this. But you never did come back, did you, Jackson? When the sun came out, that everlasting wind came up and lifted the fog. Charles! Charles, come here! Where, where are you? Where are you? Back at the house, Charles. Come quickly. Charles. What? What, what happened here? What? Look at the ground. Well, what in the... Who plowed up the ground? The ground is everywhere. It's not laying flat like it should be. It was up and down and up and down. It looks plowed? like somebody had a tiller. 
Yes, certainly plowed. Can't you see? Some crazy drunken fool plowed up the ground. But during the night? Charles, how could that be? Yes, that Jackson. He went out and he tore up the yard. He found the plow and he went through and he drove up and down and up and down. And, and he tore up the whole backyard for 40 miles and then he ran away. He went out of his mind. That boy's gone crazy tearing up the ground. Gone crazy. Gone crazy. Uh, gone crazy. That night, that same night, after I'd thought Jackson had gone crazy and run away, I went back to my work, of course. Charles? Charles, can I speak to you? Charles, please stop your work and talk to me. Haven't you lived with me long enough to know that I don't like to be interrupted when I'm working the breaking of the concentration of the mind? But I'm frightened. Are you? <laughs> really? Are you? Charles, stop it. Have you gone out of your mind? Yes, maybe I am. What did you say? Maybe I am crazy. What? All right, maybe I am. It's the only way I could have lived with you all these years. Endured your selfishness, your unbelievable selfishness. Well? Everything's for you. For 20 years, everything's for you. Now that's enough. Your work, your pleasures, what you think, what you want. Everything for you. Nothing for anyone else. Well, you shut up. The gentle little Mr. Prentice, the scientist, the good husband who never lifts his voice. Mother in heaven, I'd rather be married to a fool with a heart in him than you. Well, I'm... You haven't got a heart. You never had a heart. It's you. You and no one else. And that boy can be dead out there and you don't care. And I can be dead and you don't care as long as you're safe and doing what you want to do. Well, you go away and let me go back to my wife. Charles! Charles, I'm frightened. That boy. Now the noises. The noises. But listen to me. You've been out here all night. I've been in the back of the house alone, and I've been listening. And I didn't want to come in here, but I had to. Charles, things I said, I meant them. For years, I've meant them. I'm asking you to go away for the last time. Let me do my work. All right, that doesn't matter, but I tell you this. There's something outside the house. Find out what it is, Charles. Twenty years ago, I thought you were an irrational woman. I thought I'd trained that irrationality out of you. I was wrong. I'll humor you this once, but never again. Where are these noises? At the back of the house. The lantern, then. Hand it to me. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. You're frightened. You don't have to go along with me. I want to know. What? That you're a fool? What am I supposed to hear? Listen. What? I... I thought... Well? So what am I supposed to hear? There's nothing. The silence is deafening. Oh, hello out there. Hello. Charles, wait. Here? Give me the lantern. If it's that boy, it, I'll... It could be him, couldn't it? Crazy fool, playing practical jokes. If I get around the corner of the house and... <gasps> what? What's going on here? Charles! Something moving under the ground. Charles, what is it? Yes. It's so dark. I can't quite make out. I don't know. I don't know. It's some sort of animal. I don't know. I don't know. An animal of some sort. I don't know. Take me back to the house. I'll go yourself. The moon will come out of the clouds with the lights in the sky and you will shine down and be able to show the land. You will Give see Give me the it. lantern, Charles. No, I want to see. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.
looking for you. The echo of my voice is still in my ears. Looking for you. And the moon was under the clouds and I couldn't see you. I couldn't find you. And you had fallen into one of those craters. Into one of those holes in the ground. But which of the holes? They were all over. Ground pockmarked with holes. And I ran around. But I can't see you. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, Claire. Stop it, I can still hear you. I can still see you. Your body down in that hole as I ran toward you and suddenly I saw there was something else. Something coming toward you. Something that glistened wet in the moonlight. Something long and slimy. A great twisting snake, yet not a snake. Not a snake in it. The fear in me made me fall to the ground, and I was there, and I lay on the ground, and I saw, I saw. You hear that? You hear that, you worms out there? I thought I could run away. Now I'm very tired. I'm so tired. I'll just sit here and wait for them. I know how I'll die. The walls falling and crushing. You're under the house. You're lifting it. The walls will fall and crush me and I'll be dead. Yes, now I know why this is happening to me. I thought I could run from the world and it's happening in the world. I thought I could run away from the world and what's happening in the world. But you knew better than that, Worms. You thought I could run away. You hear that, Worms? You Worms out there, I thought I could run away. Now, now I'm very tired and I want to sit here and I'll wait for them. I know how I'm going to die, the walls falling and crushing, and the breaking of the bones and the... the episode ready yet? I've been waiting for two months. Ah! Ah! Oh god, he's got words coming out of his eyes! Ah! Rocket 88 girl. Natalie Chisholm, horror host Charles the Chemist, Wesley Critchfield, Claire, his wife, Zoe Jenkins, Jackson, his assistant, Pete Lux, scientist, his colleague, Joe Stofko, music by Tim Slade, credits read by Julia Eve, adapted and directed by Mark Slade.
Apparently, you enjoy listening to audio dramas, since you're hearing this message. I'll keep it short so you can get back to the fun stuff. If you would like to see and experience how all these stories, voices, sound effects, and music come together to create theater of the mind, make plans to visit the Modern Audio Drama Convention in Halifax, Nova Scotia, July 24th through 26th, 2020. Meet the creators. Find out how to write, record, mix, sweeten, and produce movies that play in your head. See what the voices you hear actually look like. We never look like we sound. For all the details, visit madcon.com. That's M-A-D, as in modern audio drama, then dash, as in dash on over, then con, as in convention, duh, then dot, as in it'll be the most fun you've had in a while, period, then com, as in come on over, we'll love to see you. Madcon. Your ears and brain will thank you. Hi, this is John Bell. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In my podcast, Bells in the Battery, I usually surpass a thousand words. Why does he? But for every episode, there is also a picture. You mean the itty bitty picture that you see when you bring up the episode? Yes, that's called a thumbnail. They're drawn on thumbnails? But now you can see all the thumbnail pictures in large format by going to the Bells in the Bat Free Gallery. Just go online to thebatfree.com. That's T H E B A T F R Y dot com. And click on Gallery. That's G A L L E. I think they can figure that out. You'll see all the pictures for all the episodes that were created by Jeff Music, along with other guest artists like the Lavalie Brothers and famous animation director Dan Reba. Oh, he knows one celebrity and he really wants you to know about it. You'll also see lots of fan art over the years and a few surprises so when you're in the mood for a picture instead of a thousand words especially especially his his words words, go to thebatfree.com and click on gallery and be sure to clean your thumbnails before viewing (laughs) 